Hey everybody, Julie. Looking a mess because I'm grooming. Um, this is Eli. He is the farmer in my stories. Um, and if you read his post um, today, after today's group, you'll find out something pretty amazing that I knew nothing about. Okay, so what I wanted to show you is um, how to foof a puppy, okay? Or any dog. This is how I do my drying process. And Eli is sweet as pie. Okay, first thing I always use, Hydra Ultra uh, Demanding and Finishing Spray, right out of the bath. Eli got bathed with um, a little mix of whitening and moist shampoo. Okay, so I give a spritz of that, then I take a brush, usually my Chris Christensen, but um, Eli is a little sensitive right now, he's on antibiotics. And I like the flexibility of the Artero slicker brush, so I'm gonna use that um, today. I brush that through. For me, the, what this helps is it helps to separate, okay, like, helps to separate the fur, get some air to the skin. I believe it not only, I'm brushing this through for conditioning his coat, even though I did that in the tub, but I'm helping to see there's any mats I may have missed in my pre-brush before bath, but it also, like I said, separates the curl, um, distributes the, the dematting spray, and allows air to get to the undercoat, which will increase drying time. So I'm going to force dry him, and then I'm going to fluff dry him. And that's all I wanted to show you. It's just a really quick video today about this stage of grooming, because prep is everything. The bath also, I'm gonna do a, a separate video about bathing um, and how I prep my coats. But I didn't have really time to do that today. I'm a little busy. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna use is my Canine Force 3. Um, my canine force three dryer, it's a force dryer, and I'm not gonna use that. You know, I has a sore spot. Um, he got bit in daycare, so I'm avoiding that, but he's been cleared by the vet. He actually came in the other day, I noticed uh, before I groomed him, while mom was here and we were doing our consult, consults are very important for things like this, because I wouldn't have known. I saw him after, you know, doing a full hands over, I, I felt a little spot here, and I was like, what happened? And she's like, oh, he got bit of daycare. And I was like, what? When? And it was just the other day. And they hadn't told her, but um, I said, you know, have you brought him to the vet? She's like, no, he seems fine. And I'm like, yeah, dogs don't show pain like people do. He doesn't have words. But what he's saying to me is every time he kept turning back to the spot, it was bothering him. I said, and if this was just the other day, even if there isn't an open wound, he's sore. So grooming is only going to exacerbate that. So... I rescheduled, and uh, luckily had a cancellation so I could get it in today. Sorry, I'll turn down the music. Um, so yeah, I've got him pretty much brushed out. This is like the distribution process. I'm trying to get the conditioner all through. Be really gentle. Am I still a puppy? I don't exactly know how she is now. But he is a mini um, Bernadoodle, and just gorgeous. I love how this kid turns out. First time that I groomed him, I was like, is that the same dog? I was like, oh my god, look what was hidden underneath. It was great. He's so super cute. All right, so I've got that brushed through. Now, I'm going to try the happy hoodie on Eli today, because he is just a little, maybe a little extra stressed from being on the antibiotics, a little extra sensitive. And I always like to protect their hearing anyway. Some dogs don't like it. And if they don't like it, I take it off. And because Eli was hurt, um, in this area, I usually use the belly band. But because he's small, and I know he's not going to knock over my table, but because he got hurt on that back hip over here, I'm not going to use the belly band today um, for training, because he's still training for grooming, even though this is my fourth time grooming him total. Um, so I'm not going to use the belly band because that would come right up to this portion where he has that wound and I'm not exacerbating that or making him sore. 
So we're going to take this slow. The force dryer, I'm going to keep it on low to start. And then I'm going to go to the fluff dryer. myself and for you. Eli doesn't need to be blown out like a shepherd would to release his undercoat. He needs to get the water out of the undercoat so I can fluff dry him. This nozzle will help me do that. This nozzle is better for force in um, certain areas and for like doing a double coated dog like Ruby my shepherd to, or a husky um, or a bigger doodle perhaps with a denser coat. But Eli's little. So my bad. Always learning. Always think. Way better. Drying faster.
Hey, that was way faster. So I'm glad that I reminded myself of that. How do I make that not even the girls just need to they're texting me? I turned off the notifications on my phone. I have to figure out how to do that on my computer. Okay, so the happy hoodie not only protects his ears, but there's a lot of moisture that this absorbed for me. All right, I'm just gonna give him another quick brush through. The rest of him is pretty much dry. What I liked about, so for those of you new, newer groomers, and please remember that I'm also a newer groomer, okay? I've only been grooming like a year and a half now, uh, if that, and I'm learning all the time, but um, there are purposes for all those different hoses, uh, the attachments that you get. You don't just use this guy, all right? And so that flat hose allows um, more distribution of the heat, also allows um, a softer dry. So the natural heat from the dryer um, is what I need for this coat to get down to the skin. But now that he's dry at the skin, I can take the moisture out of the rest of his hair with my stand dryer, all right? Mine is an ancient beast, but it still works. All right, so a little, so you can see. This is where I store my happy hoodies. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna help me fluff him dry. And while I do that, I'm also gonna be brushing, gonna be holding my brush to give me more control. I'm going to be holding my brush like this. You can see with these flexible slicker brushes, one side is more dense than the other. Okay, the black side is more dense. That's good for taking out tangles. That's the side I'm going to use now. So I'll be holding it like this and brushing up while I have to dry it.
the belly band would prevent him from sitting, but we're not using that because he got bit. And it would come right up in that area where that right was. Protecting his nose from the air going inside of it. giving me as much of a look time about the face as he was a minute ago. Now that I did all that I have is my hand just gently over his nose. That's it. And then you get the final stages. I use my hands. going to be just to do a quick brush up and then I'm going to comb him and he'll be ready for grooming. Variety of combs. I'll show you what I have. All right, so I guess I'll show you too. All right, for drying, Chris Christensen brush. This is the only one I have. It's the small one. Um, I am going to get the shorter pins and the wider ones. I just can't afford it right now. I usually love this on my bigger doodles. Okay. Um, I love this for my bigger doodles and uh, with the Hydro G matting and finishing spray always on almost every dog um, before drying. 
Um, this is my larger Artero slicker brush. I guess they have a double wide, which I'm going to get because I have a lot of big dogs. My small one for little guys like Eli. I use those during um, the drying process. Now, general purpose combs, you have your, you know, general grooming comb. All right, and this one is by Andis. That's your general all purpose. Like this one, I don't mind when I have hair on the table doing that. I'm not going to get mad if it drops because it's built for it. And then I have like some generic ones too. All right, got about three of those. My first really good comb that I bought was my Utsumi um, half moon comb. There it is. My Utsumi half moon comb for faces because I saw Jess Roney using it and a lot of other people and it's amazing. So you can see this, the tooth spacing, right? Wide down to fine. That's for fluffing and faces and the curve helps to make sure you don't get a sharp point in an eye. This is my new purchase from Hershey. It's a Jersey Pets from um, Olga Zabalinskaya. Um, you can see that the wide tooth comb, this is for good for fluffing poodles. There's also a smaller portion of it that is um, finer. This one um, is also from Olga. These things are so lightweight, it's not even funny. These guys you don't want to drop, and they don't want to drop that at Sumi. But I got to tell you, this thing has been through some war and back, and I don't have any bent pins. That's it. Maybe one on the end. Yeah, I just saw that. So this is what I'll use on Eli finally. All right. So you're going to go from wide. Oh, I also have, I got this at Hershey, a new Tsumi um, 298 and plastic, but I've seen a lot of people use it. I use this one. Uh, this Tsumi for creative has um, measuring marks. So first thing I'm going to do is, this is what I do. I'm going to go through him in the direction of his coat and down with this wide comb to start. It's just like brushing. You start with brushing and then you work from the widest um, with comb tooth to the smallest. And when you get that smallest through the entire coat, you know that your blade and your um, scissors are going to go right through. No problems, no surprises. All right? You can see it's taking out some stuff. It's finding it. And as I go to a smaller um, tooth width, then you'll see him floof even more. So this is my first. Put down to the paws. If there's any mats in there, it will help lift them up that you can take them out. See that? A little mat in there. So I know that. So then my next comb is going to be my Jersey Pets wider tooth. I know, Eva. I know. I know. So again, I'm going down. This comb is sharp. I have gotten it stuck in my own skin. So be very careful when you're using this. That's why you need to make sure you can get to the skin before you even start using a comb like this. So those pins are sharp. You have to make sure you're not going to hurt your dog. Okay. So this is not his, this is his not hurt side. So when you see a little snag, you know that it's combing through that hair that has not entirely separated yet. You shush. You shush. So just for hurry up purposes, I'm going to go to my final comb, my final Jersey Pets comb. I'm going to go, this is the next width I'm using. So I just did this, the poodle comb width, and now I'm going to a finer width, and then I'm going to end up with this. So one last comb. I do have a picture of a dog, Roxy. I showed her legs the other day, um, force dried versus fluff dried. And I'm gonna put that at the end of this so you can see the difference in drying technique and what it, the difference makes in the coat. And that is gonna change your grooms. Your prep is everything, you guys. You can get good prep. You can learn 
how to have, if you have a good coat, once I, have, once I do a dog and I do their first groom, I say they have my coat. So if they go somewhere else, I can almost tell. Not that they do, but like I have dogs that travel around the world and then when they come to me, I can tell somebody else has touched them. It's funny. And you guys a puppy, so after I'm done with this last comb, it's time to get off the table for a potty break, okay? So again, last part. That really fine tooth. Now if that guy's going through, I know his coat is ready for grooming. This one is where you're gonna use a little bit more time. This is where I start to brush up. Here's the thing, and I may have been doing this and not realized it. I'm always reminding myself, when you fluff a dog, right, you want to keep, you don't want to go like this, you know, scooping, okay? You want to keep the hand straight, let the comb do the work. Fluff, fluff, fluff. You see? Let the comb do the work. See me fluffing? So now I'm going like I was going down before. Final. So we found a little something. Got through that. Up. Staying away from that wound. I'm gonna deal with that separately. I said it's not an open wound or he would not be on my table or in my shop. I would never groom a dog with an open wound, which is why I sent him away last time and made sure he was healed before he came back and moved off. The vet gave him a clear bill of health and um, I got the proof, the paperwork um, from the visit to prove it. I know I was going the wrong way, wasn't I? Well, oh, Eli. So if you want to know what's really cool is if you look at his legs right now, they look pretty good right now, fluffed up. All right. This allows me also to see during his last groom areas that I may have missed because if it's not like uniform, then I know all right, I need to work on in this area. A dog that I just groomed four weeks ago should have a really good shape already for me to follow. When I get new dogs, I look for that shape. I hope that did not just quit. I would be so mad. Hold on. No, good. Okay. My screensaver went on. Okay. So he is fluffed. Pin knots. This, this comb is the one that gets out all these little pin knots. Okay. So Eli is fluffed, cute, and he's ready for his groom. So if you have any questions at all, I will link on um, Product, uh, my products that I used um, in this video in the description so you can get them yourself and then um, I will try and attach a picture of Eli in his finished room after. But this is how you dry a dog. Much love. Huh, Eli. He's such a good boy. I'm so lucky. Alright. Bye y'all.